So one of the first pieces of equipment you'll need is an SDR radio. This is my S RTL SDR and you can tell the genuine ones because they have RTL SDR blog and this sticky label on and the ends are curved and only have two screws. If they're rectangular then they ain't the genuine article. There we go, just wait for the autofocus to come in. If the ends are rectangular, it's not the genuine article. I've heard mixed reports about what the uh, fake ones perform like, but the RTLSDR.com version 3 blog one is excellent. And that on itself is no use, you need an aerial with it. The aerial may look similar to this one. This is, I've taped it onto a metal plate to provide a ground plane. And that's a little whip antenna aerial that'll work on VHF and UHF. This one I actually bought separately. It's better quality than the one that comes with it. I also have some external aerials. Let's go and have a look at those. Okay, so coming out to my house there's two aerial leads. The grey cable goes into this Balon transformer. You don't need that unless you're transmitting, but it improves the match to the aerial. And the, the third black wire there is a end fed long wave, the top one. And it's mounted on some uh, insulators that are used for electric fences. And it goes all the way around the garden, all the way down here. all the way to the wind chimes on the end and that's about 15 meters long and that gives pretty good performance on shortwave. The other antenna I've got sat on top of the water tub is a collinear. This is a cheap copy of a Diamond X50. It works on 2 meters and 40 70 centimeters and it's ideal for amateur radio use which I'm a licensed radio amateur. So that's very appropriate. But uh, yeah, that gives quite a bit of gain over the standard aerials. Back inside in my conservatory, we can see a Raspberry Pi 4. And that's connected to a new LEC Smart SDR. These are about £24 in the UK. And that's the first one I bought, and it's quite effective. That's coupled to this yellow tube which is a piece of piping and inside that piece of piping is a homemade antenna. The piping is just to hold it all together. It's basically a folded dipole which is somewhere between the air band and the 2 meter amateur band but it also works quite well on 70 centimeters for reception and even on broadcast FM on 88 to 108. It's, it's okay for that for just general listening. It's certainly not suitable for transmitting on even for a licensed amateur. So now let's go and have a look at the software and how we can use it to receive different signals. Okay, so we've got our SDR radio hooked up to my computer. This one's the RTL SDR, but they're very similar. I slightly prefer the RTL SDR, but they're both great radios. And I've started S by SDR Sharp. This is free, it's one of the favourite SDR monitoring programmes. There are some subtle differences between them, which I'll, I've covered in another video, but the, the facilities in them are broadly identical. And I've tuned in Radio 3 on 90.5 MHz. Let's have a listen to what we're getting. OK, so it's distorted and hissy. So that's coming in at minus 34 decibels, and the signal-to-noise ratio is 9 or 10 decibels. 
not very good. Let's switch over, that's on my little 5 8 whip. The one that was on the windowsill, but it's on the windowsill now anyway. Uh, this is very similar to the ones you get with your SDR. Let's switch to something better. Okay, I'm now on my collinear outside. So it was minus 25 decibels before. This is at minus 24, 23. With a signal to noise ratio is 25 decibels. Let's have a listen to what that sounds like. Okay, that sounds great. But we are also starting to receive other signals. We couldn't pick that up before. There's a better one. So the waterfall's not giving us a lot of information at the moment. The waterfall's good to tell you what's going on, not just with the station you're receiving, but with the whole band. And by playing around with these controls, we can get we can get some uh, reference. So blue is no signal at all, amber is a good signal, orange is a strong signal and red is a massive signal. So we go back to 91.9, 90.9, We can see that's right up there in the red now, that's a really strong signal. So enough about broadcast, let's have a look at some, air, some of the airband so that's a very popular place for SDR people to start listening to, especially if you live near an airport and you get lots of activity. So we'll move up to the airband and I'll find a transmission. Okay, to get rid of the nasty background here, some employing. I'm employing the squelch control. So now when there's no transmission, there's no sound. And we can adjust it with this control here. So we can turn that up until we just get no audio. And you'll see quite a few other transmissions popping up. I can't swear that this is my local airport, but my local airport is East Midlands. Typically an airport will use about four frequencies. They'll use one for the tower, uh, one for the for the, uh, the planes taking off and manoeuvring on the ground. Then they'll use them for the walkie-talkies for the ground crew. Additionally, there are airband stations that work a good distance away. So even though I'm in the East Midlands near Derby, I can pick up Scottish Aviation because they have a transmitter here relaying information from aircraft coming in from the south going up to AIR, AYR in Scotland. Uh, so you can follow that. If you're into aircraft you can go on flightradar24.com and you can watch the planes arriving on a map. You can compare the flight numbers with the information you're receiving. Sometimes it's absolutely non-stop on here and there'll be multiple frequencies in use. Not everything is audio though. There's one. What you can do if you miss them, you can click on it down here and it'll tune that frequency in for you so the next time they transmit you'll be ready for them. You get to recognise different types of transmissions so on this zoom level, AM audio is just a very narrow band. These ones are some sort of digital data or telemetry. You can of course zoom in and get more detail. That also makes the signals more recognisable. But when you're searching for signals, it's good to be wide out like this. There's a lot more going on. Sometimes they're a bit off frequency when you click on them. Right, that's not what I thought it was.
tends to be a lot of activity in the afternoons with aircraft and it is Saturday afternoon now. But yeah, because they're AM and you'll normally hear half of the conversation which will be the airport. If you live further away from an airport you'll probably hear the actual aircraft themselves and not hear the airport. On a good day with a good antenna you'll pick up both and it makes for interesting listening. Let's go see if we can find some amateur radio. Okay, so we're on 145 decimal 625 megahertz and we're in Naraband FM mode now, which most amateur radio use on VHF and UHF. Notwithstanding that they use digital mode, single sideband on different parts of the bands, but the most common really is FM and it suits the handheld radios. The beeps are Morse code, which identify which transmitter you're listening to. Bit of a throwback to the old days. You don't need to have, understand Morse code to be a radio amateur operator these days. And the, the purpose of the repeaters is to allow somebody, typically mobile or handheld, to talk to people in a wider area. But these days repeaters are also connected to the internet, to networks like uh, Brandmeister and Echo Star, and that allows, allows somebody with a handheld radio to talk to people with all over the world. So it's very useful. It makes for interesting listening, but it tends to be busier in the evenings. He's just going to change frequency, but I didn't hear what to. And again, the joy of this waterfall display is that when he pops up again, there's a good chance we'll hear him. Oh, there you go. He's come down a couple. Okay, so it's quite a distance from me, so it's not a very strong signal. But you notice how wide that band is compared to this one here. This one is almost certainly a digital transmission. Let's have a listen to it. Now you notice when the transmitting, all we're hearing is a hiss, a, hiss, a mush. That's because it's a digital transmission and I don't have a digital decoder switched on. But that's something you can add on. There are programs that you can add on to your SDR software that will allow you to decode all manner of things. From satellite, weather satellite pictures, slow scan television, pages, although pages tend to be encrypted these days. But you can do a wealth of decoding. So that's a 2 meter amateur band. I'm going to move over to some shortwave stuff now because, again, that's something that's really popular. Oh, well, 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 yeah, we are. Playing the place of the night, 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 night. 